Hello, Beef Baseball World. Welcome back to the Beef Ball Blue Show. Here after the Thanksgiving break, ready to run off three more shows before we close out 2020 and move on to the 2021 version of the Beef Ball Blue Show. But before that, of course, I got to tell you, I am Neil D.A.W.G. and I am so thankful to be joined by Seth Bam Bam Clark oh, really? Sethy. How are you? Sethy. Where I used to be the most powerful man in meatball. Now I'm Sethy, man. No, what's up? I <laughs> Not much. Uh, oh, uh, you? man, that's good. I, mean, I like that. Uh, I'm listening to you sound huh? like, uh, who is it, Michael Buffer or whatever? And now, uh, in the red corner. <laughs> Don't do it. Do it. That, you know, he copyrighted his whole thing. It costs like, it, I don't at minimum like fifteen hundred dollars to say those words. So it may be more than that. So don't well, don't go get... there. We'll have to have Frank okay. cut it out. Speaking of ah, sorry. Speaking of Frank Porter, I, I'm happy to announce the first job promotion on the Beatball Blues show. Frank now is officially the music director of the show. I uh, I let him on the last show totally do the music on his own. And he pulled out stuff that I, I didn't expect. Or, and I loved how he did it. I was like, man, Frankie, it's all you now. He spends a lot of time putting in all the music for us and stuff. And uh, I figured let him have a little more fun with it. Plus, he's there. I mean, you kind of pointed out it's hard to get me and the music lined up the way I'm telling him to do it when I'm not there hearing right. whether it works or not. So it's like, man, right. Frankie, you did good. You got a good ear. So. Uh, I won't yeah. let him run with it. So Frank, no, I thought I, I thought it li- it sounded good last week. I agree. Or not no, last no. week or whatever that well, was. Two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. No, he did a great job. I was happy with this. So I'm happy to announce Frank Porter is officially the music director of the show, meaning he's making a lot, uh, lot more money now than he was uh, before on the show. <laughs> and, and, and Frank, I almost just got fired, so you almost got another. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, also, before we get to our guests, we got the Minnesota Millers with us. So we're going to have a a big fun show learning about the Millers. But something that uh, uh, happened to me today that was funny, you know, I I recently told Tim Hibner, um, because I I played with Oklahoma for one year, that um, all the teams I played for, the only jersey I don't have is an Oklahoma jersey. I'd like to get one of the old jerseys. So he told me he was going to send a, 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 not just an Oklahoma jersey, jersey but uh benny uh, benny myers jersey who you know, i call him benny legend so i mean I, I was all excited and i and uh, like three four days ago got a package that felt like clothes that i wasn't expect i hadn't ordered anything i wasn't expecting anything else so i figured that's it and i threw it aside i ripped that package open this morning because i was going to uh, wear the jersey on the show today it's a hoodie for like a one-year-old <laughs> little, teeny tiny little hoodie i'm like I, then i start to get like well is this my first notice <laughs> what somebody tell yeah, me right? something daddy although i know yeah, that, right? i know that's right. not possible unfortunately <laughs> i know for a fact that can't be possible uh, you, <laughs> never, you, never, for... you never know deal dog you know somebody you know now you can stave sperm and stuff like that <laughs> yeah and you, right, this, this could be like for 20 years ago oh man, man. Uh, I don't want to take that turn, but uh, my mind was racing. I, obviously, I got it. I got to get on with uh, somebody who could see, like uh, on my iPhone, like from be your eyes or whatever, and figure out <laughs> what, what, what I mean, if it was the wrong address or what. But enough about yeah. that. Yeah. Bring in, uh, go bring in the first guest of the Minnesota Millers, a voice, a person that everybody anywhere close to. Beat Baseball is very familiar with, is secretary of the MBBA, but for today, just a member of the Minnesota Millers, Mr. Steve Garris. Stefan, welcome, baby. Don't call me Stefan. I always, I always call you Stefan. 
Uh, you right. Uh, oh, no, Steph. you're Stefan. <laughs> Stephen. Stephen and Stefan, man, I've never heard you refer to as Stefan before. Steve. That's how mo- that's how it is that's how it is spelled. It's not how I prefer it to be said. But whenever he whenever you I, call, I usually answer the phone, go, what up, Stefan? Yeah. You know, exactly. get, uh, you know, you being the NBA NBBA secretary, it gives you kind of a distinguished air, you know. Stefan. I'm I'm Stephen the secretary. <laughs> Stephen 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 I'm sure that, I'm sure, the third. I'm sure most of my yeah, teammates Stephen. in the I'm sure my most of my teammates in the Minnesota Millers might probably disagree with you. Because <laughs> in, they don't call me the secretary of the NBA. They call me the Minister of Disinformation. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh that's oh, a so, good that's so, a good start. So, so you call work me, for you work for Trump. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> the ballot, the, the he did it. Wrote the rules. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry. Wrote I'm the sorry. rules. All right, I well, never got the text. The I ballots are still being counted. It's let, right. me, let me find the setting to mute them. Hold on. <laughs> and, 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 and mind you, the thank you for having us on the show. But mind you, that term was originally coined by our coach Doug Van Dyne. So I have to give All credit right. where credit is due. Okay. But thanks for having us on, Neil. Very it's, much. Uh, Minnesota oh, hey, hey, I like to be what? included in that. Neil and what? Seth. It's the Neil and Seth show. Hey, okay, everybody. forgive me. I, 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 it wasn't, I didn't get a phone call to be on the show by Neil and Seth. I got a call by Neil. Oh, but anyway, no, maybe he's your producer. I don't know. But anyway. No, he, the, he, 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 <laughs> but he, thank he, you, Neil he, and Seth, for having having us on. Having hey, I like on. that. We've been, uh, we, we've been around as part of the league as a team since 2010. And it's a it's a great synergy of individuals, and the people who are joining me today here are will go from lowest to highest in terms of uniform numbers. We have the monster Pat Lemke, number five, and we Welcome have back. number nine Riley Sherman, the Shermanator. Uh, Riley, yeah, Riley Riley Schmitz, I should say, not Riley <laughs> Sherman, but we call him the Shermanator. And then we have number thirty-two Matt McCoy. <laughs> The real McCoy. I'm not going to say what we we also call him as our other <laughs> nickname, but it's okay. It's all good. And then we have, of course, our coach, Doug Van Dyne, who's also on the line with us today, number 25. Hello to all of you, and thanks for coming in. Doug's the head coach of the team? Yep, has been since we started. That's very cool. You know, Doug, uh, I, I would like to share a story with you because it's related to the show. Um, I, I had an opportunity to, to meet you back in 20, uh, I don't know, something, uh, 13, somewhere back there. You and Steve and I did a NBBA site visit in Cedar Rapids, and the three of us were sitting around talking to beep, about beatball, and I, I had told you then how I had to have a dream of running a, like a training camp for for young and newer players and you uh, I always appreciate how much you encourage me to try to stick with that and get to it but you know that really the beatball blue show that's how I ended up starting this like the first few shows it's turned more into a thing to to you know uh, feature teams and and stuff and, uh, and Seth's here working as a co-host but at the very beginning uh, it was me just bringing on people and doing like a virtual training camp and uh, that's so far the closest I've been able to come to seeing that dream through. But th- this show really started out as a, a kind of a continuation from that conversation we had years ago. Now you're a head coach, do? Yeah, well, that's not quite the story I thought you were going to tell, but I really appreciate it. <laughs> which one did you, hey, which one did you think he was going to tell? I, I was going to tell the one about, I thought he was going to tell the one about the gifts that Cedar Rapids left in the room. Um, which uh, oh. everybody thought were like uh, snacks, you know, pretzels and stuff like that. But it turned out that they were macaroni, uncooked macaroni. No, no, oh, you, yeah. you, you, <laughs> no, 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 you're, you're confused. You're confused. No, you're confusing with uh, w- with Ames when I had the incident with Ames in 2012. So that story goes as uh, I come in for the World Series, and there's a gift basket in my room. And I open up the gift basket and I open up this box, which I thought was pretzels. I bite into it, but it's not pretzels. It's what's it? Uh, uh, Baroni pasta or it's a pasta. Yeah, Barella. Barella, yeah, Barella pasta. pasta. And then I called the Sean Damaris, who's running the tournament for, for Ames, Iowa. I said, 
what are you trying to do? Break my teeth? He said, these are not pretzels. These are, this is macaroni. He goes, oh, we I said, you didn't put Braille on the box. What the hell? <laughs> you know, but that, that's what you're thinking about, Doug. Aim, Cedar Rapids. It's yeah, so yeah, right. they, all, they all run together after a while. It's all exactly. Iowa. It's all Iowa. Exactly. So, well, Neil, I'm, gl I'm glad you oh. actually took something and ran with it. Um, Finally. <laughs> well, you know, these things these things take time, right? Right. But, right. Not um, true that. You you did something, and that's awesome. So uh, I'm glad I'm glad you found some inspiration. Uh, so let let's jump through and get to know uh, every uh, all, uh, um, Doug and, and the players. So we'll start with you, Doug, uh, since uh, you've already been talking a little bit. How, how do you find the sport? So um, Evan is my son. And yep. I think uh, a lot of the listeners know who he is. And, and great, uh, great, every, great defensive player. He's turned uh, everybody on the line, I think, is uh, knows him. And so he uh, he asked me for a ride one day. He said, listen, I, I'm going to go play this uh, sport that I I heard about up in uh, Jim Mastro, another name most people are familiar with. Uh, Jim used to run a, a summer camp up in uh, northern Minnesota. I said, all right, I'll give you a lift. And so I give, I give him a ride over to this practice. And it was the Minnesota Fighting Lions back then, um, a okay. couple years old, I think. And uh, I'm walking over to the field, and, and um, I see this one guy. He's got shoulder pads on and <laughs> football pants on. I go, dude, I thought you said this was baseball. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, what, what are we getting into here? <laughs> That, that was Tom uh, Tom Heinel, another name from the past, uh, back when uh, there were a couple teams here in Minnesota. But okay. anyway, oh, so I went what, to the – Hold on, what year are you talking about here? I'm, I'm, this is I'm, 2010. Well, in 2010 when I took Evan, but, you know, the, this, this was more of a recreation team at the time. 2010 was our first World Series uh, with the Minnesota Fighting Lions. Um, and so we had – you know, a variety of ages. I mean, we had one lady, uh, Marilyn, I think she was 70 at the time. <laughs> um, you know, so anyhow, so, so we go to that and, you know, just like Boy Scouts or anything else where they see new blood, they're like sharks, they can smell it. <laughs> and so they're like, hey, hey, do you want to help out? Do you want to whatever? <laughs> I'm like, sure. You know, we, a big we, time we're, commitment. We're, more, we're more like leeches. We just, like, we'll grab on to anything, <laughs> anything yeah. that's helpful that comes around. We just right. attach right. ourselves to it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I passed the test. I could fog a mirror. So they're like, yeah, come on, you're good. Um, and then, so, so that was our my first experience with the World Series. And then, and then they're like, hey, you know what? You should probably run the team. I'm like, Ooh, wait, what? <laughs> So that's that's what yeah. happened, and we took off, and then then we rebranded, we formed a 501c3 um, under the name of Minnesota Fighting Lions, and then we we developed a couple of programs. One was a child a kids program for kids that were like 16 and under. And then we had the recreation team we called it, which were the people that you know were older or not quite up to speed on the real game it was a place for them to go and learn it and then we had uh the tournament team and so we just rebranded the name of that tournament team to the minnesota millers oh I, uh after we uh hear from the, the other players i was going to ask you guys uh, about the 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 new name but we'll we'll save that for a minute set dog pick one of the players to introduce themselves a little bit you know the 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 Shermanator. Hey, you like that? I was thinking yeah, that. Like, yeah. funny. I'm like, man, how how, how we get Schmidt to Schmidt Shermanator? So <laughs> well, his, yeah, his name is yeah. Riley Schmidt, but we just we just call him Sherm. I mean, it's yeah. So 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 yes. So, yeah. so Riley, Riley, how do you yeah, find Riley. the sport? Tell us a little bit about yourself. So I played it a few times when I was younger and had gone to like blind sport camps and stuff, but I really got into the sport when I was an STP back in 2013. I We were doing a little demo on beatball and Doug was actually there. 
And I was just kind of, you know, going through the drills. We were running the bases, picking up balls. And Doug comes over and talks, and we get started talking. And he talks to me about the competition team and starts asking if I want to go. And so from there, I ended up going and meeting up with them for a practice, really liked it. And a couple of weeks later, I got on a bus and traveled down to Georgia with them with a bunch of these guys that I had just met in like three weeks beforehand. <laughs> so uh, you said you said Georgia, I assume then that was the 2013 tournament. That was your first tournament? Yep. Is that right? Yeah, cool. Yeah, Columbus. Excellent. Uh, Excellent. They put us at, a, at that crazy, crazy hotel next to the to the to the freeway man it's it, it somehow we get hotels right next to the freeway i'm always wondering are we going to lose blind people you know, <laughs> on, on the saturday night or whatever <laughs> that, was, that was a battle that was a dangerous one you know All the food uh, was on the other side of the freeway <laughs> we 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 say that and laugh because we we know what it's like but i i i I remember over 10 years ago, like a goalball player at a goal at a goalball tournament uh, that a uh, very thing happened. So uh, right, uh, that's true. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, Neil, we have a, we have a program here in Minnesota. We have several programs here in Minnesota. The program that Raleigh was re referring to is called summer transition program. Okay. And we've been working with those guys since 2016 where they'll come spend some time with the Millers at, and we'll do a, uh, you know, a one-on-one -on -one type of situation where we try to get everybody the opportunity to learn yeah. the fundamentals of beat baseball. And then from that, we've gra we've grabbed some people and we've had some people come up to the competitive team uh, or the, comp uh, the tournament team for that matter and have joined us. So Riley's a product of that. You'll hear that pro Matt is, a, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Pat is a product of that. And so, in essence, so is Evan. Evan, there's another program called Vision Loss Resources. And uh, that's, you know, we, we've worked with them as well, too. But cool. Seth, no, go I, ahead. Were you going to say what? something, Seth? No. no I, uh -oh. I said, Seth, go ahead. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I got no idea what's going on right now. So let's, <laughs> since you brought up uh, Matt, Pat, let's go to you, Pat. What, what's your story? Uh, me? Uh, well, I just really joined the team in 2012. Uh, it was basically... Uh, my first time at, or was it my second time, but uh, at, basically it first started people, I went to, uh, James Mastro's camp up in, uh, Bemidji, uh, Minnesota, mm -hmm. and I learned, uh, beat baseball for the first time and I really enjoyed it there and I really got good there. And then, um, they were kind of talking about saying I should probably join up, but I never really got it into talking with any of the players before that or i don't think we even had a team yet but <laughs> and then i got to stp and then um that saturday when we had we were supposed to meet up with the recreation team i we played a little bit and they said hey you're pretty good you should come and join our tournament team so that's when i actually ended up joining cool and you stayed with it all the way i guess yep awesome nice work and you mr matt yeah, I joined, uh, well, I see some friends of mine, visually impaired friends of mine, talked me into starting to play in 2006, 2007 with the recreational team. Okay. And I was, uh, I was lucky enough to stick with it, and I was one of them that was chosen to break off into the, uh, the, the tournament team when we changed over in 2010. Okay. There's original, yeah. Matt is one of the original four. It was myself, Matt. Doug's son, Evan, and also another gentleman that he's not playing anymore, but he certainly was a, uh, he was entertaining both on and off the field. Ben Goodrich, he's a Paralympic judo athlete now for USABA, but okay. those were the original four. It, we, we had a mosh pit of individuals in 2010. It was a lot of people thought, knew that it was going to be a tournament. Several people th knew there's going to be a tournament in, in Rochester and some of the people treated it as a vacation. So we had a uh, a coming to Jesus moment with Doug after that, and he says, "If I'm going to run this, then we're going to run it my way and make it make it a competitive team." So things transpired after that for the better for all of us. Yeah, you guys. Uh, over the last several years, it's like you've you've you you're always in the like top half. You know what I mean? You see, like you it seemed like you lately um, you've, you've 
been consistent of being right around number 10 ish, you know, get sometimes a little higher, sometimes a little lower. Uh, but it seems, you know, like you found like a consistent group. What, what can you guys do to kind of jump over, you know, and make that next step up? Well, I think overall, personally, I think since 2011, we've had, we've had Dan Elison as our pitcher and he's a, an absolute insane perfectionist. <laughs> um, our numbers may not necessarily show it, but you know, the team really thrives on the building blocks of synergy. And since Dan has been with us since 2011, everyone such as Pat and Riley and others have come into the team and they're building with the same consistent pitcher. And when, you know, when I first came into the league with talking with you, Neil, and others in the league, it's, there were teams, you know, such as the Kansas All-Stars and such like that, and the West Coast Dogs and Austin Blackhawks and such, and they always had consistency with with pitchers. Maybe that's not so much the case anymore today, but we've had Dan as a pitcher <laughs> now for almost 10 years. So, hey, you, you are right. The Dogs did have consistency with our pitchers on the early days. Bad well, yeah. consistency. Yeah, well, yeah. 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 <laughs> he, 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 he being sarcastic. We, we, we weren't blessed with pitching, really, <laughs> very often. I mean, we were at times, not very often. Yeah, you know, sometimes, <laughs> we, we, sometimes on Wednesday between 10 and 11 yeah. o'clock in the morning. <laughs> we, we started off with Brett Scott as our first pitcher, who is another phenomenal pitcher and just being consistent and that's I think maybe who Matt probably remembers back then when we he only did it for one year he couldn't I actually hit a lot better off of him yeah um <laughs> but then he had to give it up because of footwork hopefully, hopefully Dan's and, hopefully Dan's not gonna listen to the show yeah right <laughs> <laughs> I was like hey Matt man we, oops we <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> now as we grow now in through the COVID season of 2020 and plan for 2021, we're, we're expanding our horizons with, of course, to be a better team, we have to have young players. Generally, our players are on the younger side. They're in their um, 20s and early 30s, for that matter. We have a couple of younger ones at some point. We have some other people who are going to be coming on board as brand new, uh, may not necessarily be in that younger age. Our team survives and thrives on synergy. And you, we know who's going to gel with us and who's not. And we've been consistent with having people all within our own state. We practice in Saint, North St. Paul and then occasionally in Rochester. And it's the same group of people over and over again. So we grow both on and off the field. We, 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 we eat, we play ball together we, we hang out together and we make it a, as a successful of a team as we possibly can so as long as everyone stays healthy and thankfully we haven't had any major injuries in the last couple of years to anyone during the, during the, the tournament will uh, continue to thrive hey doug uh let me ask you I, i'm curious what led to the change of the name in the millers like what what was the choice for the millers uh that, that's a really good question we we Kind of, uh, you know, discussed it in a smaller circle a little bit, but uh, <laughs> um, today, no, you, we, hold uh, on. <laughs> what do they oh. call that? A, synth a synthesizer? I think no, we lost. That's the easiest buffering. Yeah. yeah. No, I know. I, I think we might have lost them all together. Are you there, Doug? Yeah, we lost them all. Oh, you know. Oh, he's coming back. He's back. <laughs> <laughs> well uh, what about what about the play, hey, play, players uh, you know i forget you know one thing i always i, I love playing tournaments in minnesota i mean it, it, it's a beautiful place you know um i hear steve talking offense and stuff like that but it seems like you guys would be really locked in on defense and 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 that stuff how do you guys or i i don't know um, you know, which one of you guys is, you know, a, a better defender, play, defensive player or whatever. But um, how do you guys, would you, you know, uh, uh, kind of sum up your your approach to the to, to, to the defensive side of the game? 
So I would think it gets back to kind of like what Steve was saying with our cons our consistency. We always are out at practice. Everybody seems to make it as much as they can. And we always have the same guys out there. So you build that chemistry together. Yeah. And we've been playing with each other for years. So it just builds off of e itself. Yeah. I yeah. So, so I'll jump in real quick. One of the things Katie asked me in one of the World Series, that same exact question. Um, and the, my answer to her pretty simply, I think the team would, would agree with it. For us, it starts off with, uh, with the, we play a, a little different defense. We have two up front and four in the back. So the two people up front, we refer to them as the air traffic controllers. That's funny. <laughs> I, I used to I, I I used to play up front for the dogs by myself for the majority of our time and I called myself that. I've never ever heard anybody else. I know Seth has heard me refer to myself as that. I've never heard anybody else use that terminology. So I, you got my attention. I like that, Doug, but yeah. go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, so so we have we have Evan up front on the uh, left on side, the left side or right, yeah, whichever way you're looking at the field. Um, and then... Uh, there he goes again. I, I was hoping we could find out his Miller's answer. <laughs> and we, and so we have, we, have Evan, we have Evan in left field and we have Chris Peterson in right field. And generally at some point... Uh, our, he was also... Our, <laughs> you know, Doug, uh, we we keep losing you. Like you, you cut out like, during your answer. Like, uh, but before we lost you again, I want uh, we didn't hear any of your Miller answer. I don't know. I don't think you know that. But when I asked you why you changed the team name, you you totally lost, were gone from us. So. All right, are you here? Can you hear me now? Yeah, you're yeah. there's a bell right now. So can, can you hear me now? Right, so so, uh, so we'll backtrack, and you can edit. Yeah. <laughs> um, we, we, we picked the Minnesota Millers because back in the early days of baseball, before uh, there was professional baseball here, there were the St. Saint Paul Saints okay. and there were the Minneapolis Millers. And uh, we just decided to go with Minnesota Millers uh, to combine both cities. And then we picked the colors based off the U of M which are maroon and gold, uh, because you, we could get those color schemes virtually everywhere. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Makes sense. So right. it was a financial reason and right. uh, a nostalgic reason. In, in the end, so many beat baseball team names have to do with you know financial reasons or whatever i mean some there 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 are teams that completely changed their names after many years of going under one name because a sponsor wanted them to so you know and that's why fort worth went from fort worth roadrunners to lone star roadrunner they had somebody there that thought it'd be better for them to go by lone star instead of fort worth and boom so that that that's a that's a trend i think in beat baseball so Neil, just to build on what you were talking, what you asked before. So, generally speaking, as we as we have it now, we have Evan, like I said, left field front, and Chris Peterson right field front. We have Matt over Chris's left, sh uh, yeah, his left shoulder in right deep right field. Mm -hmm. We have either myself or Riley in right center field, and again, either one of us in left center field. We have another player by the name of Todd, who will fill in in there as well too. And then we have probably one of the probably the second or third fastest person people in the league. His name is Josh Shong. We call him the ticket because right. it's like a speeding ticket by the way, how fast he runs. He took in the fastest man, fastest person contest last year at the World Thank Series you. in Tulsa in 2019. He was third behind Gerald Dykus and Zach uh -huh. Bueller. Yeah, that was a tough field. So that's yeah. impressive. I, I have heard of him and his speed. So. He can what? generally run. He can generally run a base at about four point three. What? What's the? What is the genesis of calling the two short people air traffic controllers? Why do we call them that? They a, I call I call them that because uh, both Evan and Chris, and, and sometimes Steve plays up there, but they're they're very good at guiding the fielders behind them to the spot where the ball is. Um, you know, over me, you know, so many yards, you know, by me on the ground, 
Um, they're just really good at directing the traffic uh, once if it gets past them. So um, it just reminded me of uh, the air traffic right. controllers, you know, guiding planes into the field safely. You know, it all sure. worked out. It all worked out for us too because we generally now at some point and and I don't remember the last time we actually consistently practiced with a field spotter. The the players will go out in the field. We'll we'll get verbally positioned by Dan. Say for instance, because he'll stand at home plate, going to hit his defense. Yeah, yeah. And we talk to each other, and you know, it's really that I keep on going back and circling back to the whole synergy thing. It we feel comfortable with each other on the field, like what Riley was saying about the chemistry, and that all transcends and takes place off the field too. So not only are we just playing ball with each other, but we're trusting each other. And I, I believe in one of Neil's earlier shows, they're talking about it, it's in, it's all about trust. You know, you trust each other to cover each other's back and look, I mean, we're, we're like every other team, this accidents are going to happen, but then we have dedicated volunteers to all scream at us at the top of their lungs. Stop. <laughs> but I mean, look, it's going to happen. And we're all blind people. We're supposed to run into each other. I mean, it's, 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 it's right. by nature. But so a I lot technically of... we're not what? supposed to run into each other. No, we're not supposed <laughs> to, but it happens. <laughs> right. but I was just saying. That, that trust, though, it, it, it's just like trust in a relationship. Like, it's not given at it. It, it has to be earned, and it, it gets earned. You guys have – your team has benefited from having a, a consistent group that's been able to work together because it's really – like, you know, we had that on the dog. Seth and I know what you're talking about. And, and we had, we never hesitated to practice without our spotters. Like we, we felt that was better ear training in, in a lot yeah. of ways anyways. But I mean, that trust comes from doing things smart, doing things the right way together over and over. You know what I mean? That trust builds, you know what to accept, uh, expect from, from the people around you. There's been a ball that's been hit out to Evan and it's gone just a little bit past his reach at some point. And we've always professed, you know, don't come back on the ball. Of course, if it's within a five foot radius or whatever. Okay. But there's been many times that Riley can certainly agree with me that we've Riley and I have been coming in to back up Evan and Evan will come back and just literally take the ball out of our hands. I mean, literally, it's like we so we call him we call him Hoover. He doesn't like to be called that, but we call him Hoover because he just scoops up everything. He's he's the most amazing defensive player that I've had the pleasure to play with in the outside of Eric Mazzarigos. Well, that's that's high high compliment. Um, I, I was curious when you were ta- laying out the defense for you guys because you mentioned you and Riley switch off between right center and left center like what normally like two players that play you know the one plays one spot or the other why are you guys switching back and forth it depends on who's feeling the ball and who's who's reading the ball better that day at some point and it's it you know some days people you have bad days some days you have you have better days i mean it's yeah, true. It, it you know it's the it's a consistency you know and let you know we're going to throw in there uh, Todd Paulson, who's a newer member to our team and has come in and is a, it might play more consistently the right field side, the right center field um, type of area. But And we have another gentleman by the name of Eric Harms who uh, can do either one of those two. So we try to do a lot of interchanging parts. I, I do want to tell an interesting story about Matt. Um, when we first started... Uh, hey, Steve, oh, before, before you do that, let me just jump in from a coaching standpoint. Yeah, good. The other reason why we'll move them or people around is our bench is not very deep. We carry maybe 10 people at most. Uh-huh. And so sometimes it's a, it's a mental situation where I just need people to calm down because they get a little bit too hype. And so I need them to get back into the game. So huh. switching a position will sometimes do that, right? It, it just refocuses an individual. <laughs> Sometimes I, I, has, I, I, I'm not arguing with you because you know your team better than I do. That would have messed me up personally. Like uh, I would, I would have personally take that as a demotion. But I played, one, <laughs> I, I, I played one spot almost completely my whole career. So it, it may be a different thing. I never played back deep 
you know what I mean? So I may have had to have moved around, but I, I'm weak we, mentally uh, you know, when it we, comes we, to We sports. want a lot of our players. <laughs> Go ahead. We want a lot of our players to be multi-purpose too, though, because again, with a, a thinner bench, somebody goes down. Um, what, do, what do I do? You yeah. know? So people have so to I mean, be... Actually, I, I think that's the perfect number of players, like nine to 10. I, yeah. I see these teams that have 15, 17. It's, it's a ridiculous number of players to bring. I'm Just a it, waste of it. Nine. Yeah, I always thought so, nine is about the right number. But, but yeah, because saying. you want everybody to play too, right? I mean, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, no, I mean, you, nobody goes to lose, right? Nobody takes right. the field to lose. But, right. you know. But I, I, would, you, I would rather you, play. I would rather, play. I would rather play and lose. Then no. sit on the bench. I would rather play and lose than sit on the bench for the championship. <laughs> I mean, that's just, no, that's, no, right. <laughs> that's just me. Exactly. Though, so. Exactly. Yeah, though, I agree. Right? Because, I mean, you're all there for a reason. It's not, right. you know, I mean, otherwise we'd give you some pom poms and a short skirt. That, <laughs> that, was, that was one of the things that, that Don Robinson and I disagreed with the strongest towards the end of our run together is he really feels like every player not only would but should prefer sitting on the bench at a chance of a championship. Like he, I, I, told, I told him once that he wouldn't be satisfied if he had like 12 all-star players all on the same team. He would still be looking for more talent. He's like, yeah, what's wrong with that? It's like, man, it's, it's a waste of players' opportunities, right. man. Let them right. go play somewhere else. It doesn't, <laughs> right. I don't right. know. But sorry, so, didn't mean to go down that road. You know, no, I, I, right. uh, I, I would like to ask, uh, and, and I want to mix in Riley, Matt, and Patrick some more. So I want to ask all of you guys, but – uh, let's let's start with you, Patrick. Uh, do you have any favorite players, teams around the league? Like who who are some influences or inspirations you've had around the league? Um, I don't know many of the members on each team. That's fair. Don't so, don't feel bad. We get that a lot. <laughs> so you know you know. Let me, you know, because we do get that a lot, right? And again, it's it, it, it's a hard question. Let me ask you this: Look, like thinking back, like of your own now, your your own career, however long it's been, like what when you think of like the moment that you think you know is like the 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 the, the one moment that you know it's like ah, you know that, that, that's like that's my moment that that tells who I am as a player or that's the time that I remember most as, as the most fun I mean in your own so like career. when you feel like you belong is that what you're at like, yeah, when, just, when, did, when did you make... first feel like this is my game right here yeah or just you know something that is like man maybe it was a, ga a big game that you won or you lost it was a moment that you think of when you think of your own career on the uh, the b-ball field uh, basically the one moment that I really remember was basically my first year, 2012 Ames, Iowa. It was like hot as hell the whole week, 110, 112. But, um, it was the last game that we were playing for, a, for placement. And I think we got, uh, I can't remember if it was ninth or 10th place, but I was the one who hit the last winning run. So oh, for nice. The nice. A walk off. <laughs> Always a good feeling, man. Always, does, yeah. Doesn't matter where what, what it is. You know, if it's the last game of the, the tournament, man, if you're winning that game, it, it yeah, doesn't it's a, matter where That's it a good is. way to go out. What about you, Matt? Go ahead and answer the same thing. Um, I kind of have to say the same. I don't really know a lot. No, go ahead and answer. A lot of go, lot. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and answer. You you all could answer both, but go ahead and answer Seth's question. <laughs> it's a better question. Um, I guess it was probably real early on when I was playing. Um, twenty. I would no mainly the twenty ten World Series tournament. I remember doing really well hitting that series until I got injured, uh. and I uh, actually <laughs> tore my uh, PCL in my left knee. Ooh. So I was out for the second half of that. But I remember just really enjoying the competition and feeling successful in performing. Yeah, very nice. Riley? 
So I'd say the moment that I really felt like I belonged was it was in the 2016 AMS World Series, and I hit the game-winning run for our team. <laughs> so yeah. going going back just for for the instance that Pat mentioned, and that's where his nickname came into play. But monster, right? He's yeah, the monster. monster. But right. he, he we'll we'll say that it, to ourselves. But the truth be told is, the reason why Pat is called Monster is because at most of our games that his grandparents can come to, his grandma makes the most incredible monster cookies. So everyone just oh. digs in. <laughs> monster, digs mon- in. I mean, are they literally called monster? Co- monster yeah, they're cookies? called monster cookies. They're, 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 because you know, of size or no, what's no, what's, they're just regular mon- size. What is it? What's a monster? What's a monster? Patrick, cookie? tell him. It's, it's the ingredients in Monster Trail Mix in a cookie. Oh. Yeah, monster cookies. It basically has oatmeal, peanut butter, chocolate uh. chips, M and M's, basically uh. all the good stuff. Yep. And it's it, it, and yeah, it's, <laughs> I, I, and I'm I'm not a peanut butter fan, but so I I've only had maybe one in the last eight years since Pat oh, has been with moron. us. moron. Yeah, I, I know. I'm I, just an idiot. But, I, I want to hold the delivery of that on. today. <laughs> that, yeah, sounds, right. that sounds so good. <laughs> Matt, referenced, Matt referenced the 2010 World Series where he was hitting wonderfully. I mean, he was launching rockets, much like the uh, historic Bam Bam. And um, <laughs> he that, so that's where his we that's why he got his bit of a nickname because it seemed like Evan seemed to be the generator of all these nicknames, calling Matt the real McCoy. Um, <laughs> I want to tell you guys a funny story, and I think I've told this to Neil before, but it we talk about the 2012 World Series in Ames, Iowa. So we had a mini tornado that year, and some of our tents got destroyed, and um, no one got hurt. Thankfully, it was after the games were over for the day, but it was an incredibly hot World Series. We had a lot of people suffering from heat exhaustion that year. But uh, the funny part, and this goes into the synergy of our team, we all are at the pizza ranch in Ames, Iowa that year, that day during the mini tornado. It was on a Wednesday. And our pitcher at the time, Dan, um, set me up with something to eat, helped me out go through the buffet line because pizza ranch is a buffet line, and they're known for their pizza and their chicken and stuff like that. So I ate. And he's going through the line himself, and I'm finished. He goes, what else do you want? I said, Dan, just go d- sit down and eat, you know, enjoy your food. He says, no, no, I'll get, you, get, I'll get whatever you want. I said, I want some chocolate pudding. So I get the chocolate, <laughs> I, I, get the cho- I get the chocolate pudding, and I'm eating it. I'm like, you know, something's not right. Something smells like smoke. I'm like, I'm eating it, and I'm like, it just doesn't dawn on me until after. So Dan says, hey, how do you like that chocolate pudding? I'm like, oh, it's pretty good. Why? He says, did you check out the bacon bits that were in part of it? <laughs> this dude did, just kept eating. You yeah, know, just that, kept That's a problem of you eating too fast. Do any yeah. of you do any of you know somebody eats faster than Steve? He inhales food. They know. They see. They they can see me do it. Yeah. But it's but we try to keep our fingers away from him while we're here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why Doug sits at the other end of the table. <laughs> Hey, I remember, I remember okay. uh, hold on, I remember Ames, Iowa, okay. rolling in with the heat, and, and we roll in, and, and, and John came in, I was like, ah, oh, you know what, I want Chinese buffet. I'm like, dude, we are in Ames, Iowa, why would you want <laughs> Chinese food in from Ames, Iowa, man, Bob? That's all I remember about it. Well, outside of the brutality, but the only thing I remember eating in uh, Ames, Iowa, was Chinese <laughs> buffet. <man. laughs> I said, hey, Dan, but I was actually calling out Doug, obviously. Doug, uh, what, what was your moment? Um, like, you know, going back to Seth's question, like where where did you sit back and think, man, you know what? I'm going to coach this team. This is what I want to do. What was your moment? Well, <clears throat> I mean, I, I've always been coaching since I was 17 years old. Some, you know, softball, football. I, I coached Evan in football and – I'm not saying I'm the greatest coach, so that's not the point. The point is, though, is that there are a lot of people that that want to help, but they just don't know how to do it, especially in a modified situation. Right. Um, and so with my previous experience as a coach, I just said, you know what, 
I think I might be able to do it not better uh, as a coach, but as a teacher for the players to help them become better. Doug's original role with us in 2010 when we were fighting Lions and um, was he was a field spotter. So, I mean, I, I have moments at all the time because there's always something that happens, whether it's a play on the field or a personal experience that happens to one of the players. Um, you know, it, it could be something silly just, just to, to observe them succeeding in something or overcoming a hurdle or um, I, this goes back to Ames again, but the, the guy that you, that was trying to get us to be in Cedar Rapids, uh, he was the general manager of the Colonels, which at the time was a farm club to the Angels, California Angels. Yeah, Jack yeah. Reader. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I remember Jack. You know, Jack. Just a really Jack, that yep. weekend, Jack, uh, when the three of us were there, Jack told me about their young prospect, uh, Mike Trout, that had yep. come up through that organization. And I had already been reading about Mike Trout. But go ahead, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's fine. He's yeah. just a phenomenal guy. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But because they were af affiliated with the Angels, he had a world championship ring. Oh, yeah, 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 from you know, 02. And, yeah, and it's huge. And... I can just remember a couple of players on a team had never seen one uh, for obvious reasons, right. but just because it's been a long time since the twins had one. And when would they encounter somebody from the twins? But anyway, uh, little things like that, where they got Jack was such a good guy. He, you know, he just put his hand out, let the guys feel it so they can get an idea of what a, a legit championship ring right. was all he's still, about. He's still at home polishing it. <laughs> yeah. So, like I'm saying, my aha moments, I mean, every season, I have a new one. Yeah, and, and that's, okay. that's just the greatest part of it for me. Well, as a coach, as a, as a coach what, what is the one real decision, not, a, not like a personal one with the players or whatever, but like a strategic one or something like along those lines that you would take back, that, that you think back like, ah, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Right. Yeah, I, well, I coach my, I coach my I, son's football team, and I could think of something like, ah, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> it's still no, years later. No, I shouldn't have done it. What's, I, what about I, you? The, the worst thing that happened to me, and, and I'll always remember it, uh, is the 2010 World Series in Rochester when uh, Ben, who uh, oh my gosh. Steve had mentioned before, uh, you know, he's a young kid. He was a senior in high school, you know, and, and just built like a Mack truck came barreling in and Matt was going for the ball. They were both going for the ball at the same time. And I didn't say uh, stop or caution or whatever loud enough for them, mostly Ben to hear, uh, or he may have just been pigheaded. I'm not quite sure, but <laughs> uh, at any rate, they had a collision and, and uh, it, it jacked Matt's knee up really bad. Yeah. And so for me, that, that, that's the worst. Yeah, uh, if correct. I could take it back, I might have, I might have dive bomb Ben coming in and, you know, try to, you know, chop block him or something so that he didn't run into that. That's all right, Doug. You're, you're totally forgiven. <laughs> so so I, I, I you about I, a year and a half. Yeah. I have to, <laughs> I have to yeah. ask Doug to elaborate on, you know, we, we do things quirky guys. We don't show up to the field but 45 minutes to a half an hour before the game. You know, we don't do the conventional things that most teams do in preparation of, of games and stuff like that. We do our own thing. Um, but the funny thing about it is we come with a lot of comedy. I've been the result of that comedy <laughs> at World Series several times. But I want Doug to share with everybody about the bloops and blunders of our team and what does someone get to uh, enjoy as being the person who's messed up the worst that week in a week. What, what's your version of putting somebody in the corner with a dunce cap, I guess. Yeah. So we have, we have two things. We have uh, Floyd, which is a uh, pink flamingo lawn ornament. 
And um, during the tournament, the person that makes the biggest flub, uh, which is voted on by the team, has to babysit Floyd that night. So if they're going to go into the bar, they got to take him into the bar with them and, you know, basically <laughs> carry him around for the whole night. <clears throat> is and the then, fact that it's pink supposed to make it shameful? Yes. <laughs> no, uh, no, I, no, I am no. not supportive of pink shaming. No, I'm not um, going to support <clears throat> pink shaming. Well, no, so, then just, so you'll have to wait then because right. as many people remember, we also have a pink uh, tank top yeah. that has the letter M on it for the Millers. Um, and at the end of the tournament for the tournament or for the banquet, the person that really makes the worst overall flub Again, voted on by the team. Has to wear that to the banquet. Wear that to the banquet. Yeah. Yep. You guys. I mean, Steve I'm is, all for Steve shaming. won a number people. of times. Just, yeah, yeah, I have. I'm I all have. for shaming people, but I, I don't do pink shaming. Well, so it's. It, I, it, I'd wear. I think this little stand that I have my microphone on, I think, is pink. I got it from my mama. <laughs> there you go. So the flubby. Well, the flubby it's not be gender. Busy. It's not a gender thing. It's just. No. <laughs> yeah. 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 Then why would pink be shameful if it's not a gender thing? Well, if it, does, if it doesn't matter, why you ask? Well, let me tell you what. Let me tell you what. It's because of the size. So yeah. if you all could could actually have seen Steve wearing it, you would say it was shameful. Yes. <laughs> Is he? Does he only get to wear the? The, the 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 tank top like no no other the, there's other apparel but we'll leave yeah, that I hope so don't don't <laughs> go that, sit that, blind that, fuck around with tank tops at a <laughs> yeah, they, 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 well there's other apparel but we'll leave that for for in everybody. Wisconsin Steve wore that uh actually we I couldn't find it so I had to buy a new one it was a white tank top that said what the flock are we doing <laughs> and had a flamingo on it I, I also like have that. a flamingo hat. Uh, and a pair of flamingo sunglasses. So Steve got to wear all those. In, yep. uh, <laughs> and that was you know, the year. It, and that was the year that we had Peter Kangaroo from Jersey Mike's come. Yep. So I walked up to him at the banquet. I said, "I told you earlier today that I'm not going to be in normal attire, and don't let this be a reflection to the MBBA <laughs> or this the the title of Secretary of the League. <laughs> this is a this is a Minnesota Miller flub up." Hey, I uh, uh, hold on. I just want to say, and, and this is, you know, I don't, I, you shouldn't do inside jokes. And so I'm kind of more speaking to perhaps somebody who will be listening to this. But you guys being from Minnesota for two World Series, my my friend William Johnson would have had to be uh, wearing <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that, that, that that pink flub shirt. Why, <laughs> for two, why, for two things why would you Minnesota. limit it to two? <laughs> well, because there there, really? there were there were two that were really 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 right. really out, out of uh re really big that that he's laughing at now. Right. <laughs> if you know what they are, you're laughing yeah. at. Right. So, <laughs> and, and the flamingo, the flamingo comes from the fact that it's, the irony of it is because a flamingo is a tropical bird, and Minnesota is probably better known for its cold winters. Hey, yeah. Doug, I, I was kind of tying in, and then I, uh, I want to move on our, our these same questions to Steve. Uh, but, uh, Doug, I, I feel like there's kind of a unique uh, opportunity here. So, like Seth has mentioned, uh, he coaches his kids. Uh, he, he coach, they all, they've all, all three played youth football, and he's, he's been part of all of their, their, their you know, their, their coaching or whatever as they've been coming up. But, um, like for you, and, 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 uh, and I know that he's got to have moments where his kids are out on the field where it's a real prideful moment. And you're actually in beatball able to coach your own son. So is, is, have you had some moments? Because Evans really turned into a fantastic defensive player. Have you had your own moments where you, you're just proud at, at what he's doing out there on the field? Have there been any individual times or what's that like for you overall? Uh, yeah, I, uh, pretty much every day, you know, um, he, he is, he is good. There's no question, he, but he's selfless. 
Um, he he doesn't um, he doesn't brag about things. He doesn't take the credit a lot of the times. Um, so any time that something happens where um, he may have done something well, he he always gives credit to everybody else, and so that probably is what makes me. Proudest, that, proud, that he, proud, proud of who he is, yeah. and he also yep. gets down on himself, but only momentarily. If he if he messes up, like just being a human being, but you know, in the same instance, everyone knows Devin for being defense, but he's no slouch offensively. His bat has come alive in the last six years, more so than prior to that. I mean, he's really come into his own with a swing. He uses a um, a Phoenix bat on a consistent basis. He's consistent hitting. His speed is right there. I mean, he's he's a leader. He's yeah, a leader. Good all, good all around player. Sounds yeah. like yeah. Very well, good. he's been able to make us so we can keep you on the team, Steve. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Everyone charity begins at home. <laughs> Steve, man, because you've been I'm not gonna let you duck all of it. Okay, you've been around forever. So kind of kind of give an answer to all of it, man. Have, talk about like who who has impressed you while you've been involved in the league. And what about your own personal favorite moment as a player? Good one. Um I you know Playing with you and Seth in 2009, I didn't see a stitch of the field. Not one, <laughs> Newton, not... Seth didn't see a stitch of the roster. He wasn't with us in 2009. Well, so. no, 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 no. He was there. Oh, you said it one time, is yeah. it? I'm yeah. he, he, he was there. I was with you guys in 2009 with the dogs, and I didn't see a stitch of the field, not one out. But it was such an absolute amazing learning experience. So – when I had the opportunity to go back with the Fighting Lions at the time, the recreational team, I took the opportunity to talk to all those who were there um, about starting a competitive team. And Matt was the first one to say, yeah, let's go. Let's do it. Matt played baseball in high school okay. competitively, and it was, was well known for it. So I was glad to see him come on board. You know, it's seeing, seeing this team grow from the very beginnings to where we are now. I mean, we're not a championship-level competing, competing team, but we're not going to roll over. You know, we're there. We're going to put runs on the board. We're going to make the defensive putouts. We may not necessarily do it consistently, but we're doing it together. No, you have to. I mean, any any group project period. Yeah, it, everybody has to be on the same page. Or I, I, th or I think goes in circles. Growing up, a childhood uh, friend, growing up, who was on your show recently, Dan Fabiano, I, I've taken a lot of uh, in, uh, information and understanding and learning from him, and Eric Mazaregos, and talking to him many times on the phone and in person and stuff like that, and. I think I have to – I'll admit on the, the Beatball Blue show that I may have to pay up a bet at the next World Series to Eric Masrego. So I'm not very happy about it. But I Oh, have to... he's the one you bet with on Danny retiring? Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. Dan, Danny told me about that. Um, <laughs> anyway, the, uh, and not that I condone or condemn – betting in any, of any kind to get in our sport but it happens uh um, betting a steak dinner that but, thing, you know yeah but you know like i said that that team in 2009 you know being on the same team with eric with with you with um lex, lex gillette and chance cranford at the time and so many so many names that just they're fond memories and you know if if nothing else with beat baseball that people should take away from each of their world series to not only connect with people on and off the field, but to just learn from so many others, you know, Neil knows what I'm going to say in about a second, but I had a, the pleasure in 2001, um, no 2000, November of 2000 uh, in Houston, Texas, where we had a full board meeting for the MBBA. I wasn't on the board as of yet. I wanted to be, but I wasn't. Um, but I had a late night conversation about defense. Um, and I just listened between Kerry Cook and Neil McDonald. 
and it just Sam uh, Sam McKenzie was there that night too. Yeah, not 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 quite late into the hours. I think we were together. Right. I think you right. and Terry were together to about two three o'clock in the morning. But again, it's a learning experience, and for any new player who is coming into the league, if you have the opportunity to reap the benefits of <laughs> sitting around with people who have been around the game for a long time, there's always an educational nugget that's going to be there for your taking and for your learning. <laughs> you may not benefit from it right then and there, but you will in the future. I, and I've had the uh, wonderful, lovely opportunity to uh, grow with the Millers uh, after playing with the Long Island Barmers for so many years and um, once with the Dogs and once with the Boston Renegades. But, I mean, I, I've grown with these guys as a family. I, I laughed a little bit just going back to what you said because – and I mean, no disrespect, but for anybody to sit in a room and learn from Carrie Cook and I, when we argued about it, like we didn't agree on anything usually when no. it came to defense. So no. I, I, if anybody gained anything from our argument, that, that's an amazing. But uh, it, you know, it, I'm sure we were arguing. It, <laughs> it, it, I don't it, doubt it, that we disagreed on most points. <laughs> so is those specific moments that I had the opportunity no, to I feel you. We, build in. I started the Beat Baseball podcast and interviewing all those people like Michael Garrett, Doc Bradley, who, I'm sure none of my teammates even know who they are, but that's okay. Most pl most people don't. I've had the the luxury and the opportunity to read through a lot of historical documents, speaking one on one and working with Jim Mastro, and seeing knowing what he has done for this league, well before anybody even thought about playing beat baseball, and speaking with Denny Ubedi, who used to play with the Minnesota Braille Sports Foundation with John Ross and Bill Gibney, our, the first MBBA president, ha having the luxury and the opportunity as secretary to speak to all these individuals and learn from them all and learn from all the current existing players. <coughs> it's, been, it's been a complete privilege. And do it, you, it's a learning experience. Do you have, a, as a player, do you have like a particular favorite moment? Yep. What is it? I wasn't with the Minnesota Millers. I was with the Long Island Bombers. And 2004, we still had the consolation brackets going on. And the Long Island Bombers came back and beat the Boston Renegades for the consolation championship. And I think that was the year that the Boston Red Sox beat the Yankees and, you know, beat the curse type of thing. And, but it was, you know, at the time we were, I was playing with some great people. Jim, James Hughes played with my brother. Um, on defense then and it was I think that was the first year in the World Series that that was the first of the time one home run um, role for three World Series in a row that all adds up oh four as far yep. as like your Boston Yankees reference all yeah I mean yeah it's so I mean that's the moment that really stands out because we uh -huh. won a championship together but when I had the when I came out to Minnesota and I had the opportunity to um, play with these guys and help them grow and help them really find their own rhythm, you know, seeing Matt hit the way he does and Evan scoop up the ball like a vacuum cleaner he is and seeing, seeing people like Pat come into his own and start off slow and to see him slowly grow to where he is now. And same thing with Riley. I mean, they, they're, we, have, we have 10 people that contribute off of a bench. There's not one dead piece of wood. And that's all by good leadership of Doug. And I, I have to say, it's, you know, it, one of the things I, I, I greatly appreciate is I, seeing Dan's two daughters and my stepdaughters, Taylor and Maddie, um, coming to really learn how to appreciate beatball and want to be there as a catcher for their dad. Um, and seeing Maddie pitch for the first time a couple of years ago. Yeah. Now, we, 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 we talk about that a lot on the show. And, you know, Seth's own son, Trajan, is pitching and spotting now. We we love uh, beat ball blood. You know what I mean? Family, like, you know, family <laughs> members getting involved in it. That's always a big, a big plus. We talk about, uh, we uh, it, it comes up a lot throughout different shows, the the family connections and, and the generations that yeah. continue there's on. Too many, there's too many fond memories to really isolate into one, but the one playing moment was the mm -hmm. 
Long Island Bombers, Boston wow, Renegades good. rivalry. That's a good one. Set Dog, you have anything for these gentlemen before we give them their lives back? No, you know, my apologies for my lateness, but uh, I won't go on. <laughs> I won't <laughs> add anything at the end here. You know, I'll just say excellent show. Hopefully we'll at least get to hear about the World Series of 2021 and yeah, the right. Minnesota Millers going forward with synergy. I like that. Synergy. Yeah. To the rest of you, Doug, Patrick, uh, Matt, Riley, anything you all want to add before we sign out? I think I'm good. All right. All right. Well, thank you very much to all of you for taking time to do this. Appreciate it. Had fun getting to know you guys, learning more about the team. Um, I believe I said towards the beginning, we're hoping to have the Boston Renegades on next week. If not, we'll be here doing something else. Two weeks from now, we're having our big Christmas finale. And that's all we're going to say for now. Is it's going to be a big Christmas finale. And <laughs> close out the year. So that's it for this week. Everybody be safe, be smart. Do uh, consider things, wear your mask. We will catch you next week. Good night. Oh, can, can I say one? No, one last... I'll say good night. Oh, come on. Go ahead. Come on. Go ahead. You didn't I'm get you know? Go ahead. Go ahead. I just want to. Shut up, Steve. I, <laughs> love you too, Matt. I just want to say that it's, you know, I, it's hard for me to say anything about beat baseball with and anybody else that I've mentioned. Um, of course, my, uh, my daughter is growing also, is still – She's a child growing up in beat baseball, uh, Kaylee, and she's going to, I'm sure, grow into being something even hopefully maybe one of our future field spotters. I don't think I'll be playing at that point, but maybe she'll be field spotting. But if anyone's interested in checking out the Minnesota Millers, you can go to mnmillers.org and you can catch us on the web. And we hope to be a contributing factor to the success of the 2021 World Series. <laughs> I love the way you do stuff, Steve. You interrupt me to tell where to find you, which is a good yeah. call. I like that. It's the same with how the, how the whole story about your daughter get involved? Hey. <laughs> I, can't go, I, can't, I can't go without saying something about it. It, it, was, it was like one of the, uh, you know, uh, qu answers on the debate stage, you know, text to blah, blah, blah. It's like, where's that coming from? Man? Come on, now. I, th I thought we were going to have some, some like heartfelt moment there. No, I, the it, shame it, was I, 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 appreciate, I, appreciate you, I appreciate you both, Neil and Seth, and what you guys have done with the show. The show has grown, and I, at least I know Minnesota Millers have appreciated you having us on, and thank you, and hope you both have a happy, healthy holiday. Oh, you so too, much. Steve. Same, same to everybody. Seth Dog, will you tell your great aunt goodnight for us? Good night, Aunt Cindy. <laughs> <laughs>